Five. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy, Five Piece producer and engineer extraordinaire, and I'm back with another lesson for your head tops. And this one is kind of cool. It's going to be focused on compression, specifically compression on vocals. I know I've talked a little bit about compression in different ways in past lessons, but today a lot of people wanted to know about how I would work on compressing a vocal and how that would work. So I'm here to deliver that to y'all. Let's jump into Pro Tools and I'll show you what's going on. I got a song that I actually used in a previous lesson, you might remember. It's something I've already released, but we're using it for this tutorial. It's called Don't Feel the Same. It's by myself, uh, featuring Goudini, uh, Romeo Wilson, and Rich Kid on vocals. So, super dope record. I'll include a link in the bottom if you want to listen to it on your own time. So, let's just kind of dive right in here. I'll play you where I had this left off in the previous lesson where we talked about EQ. I'm actually just going to copy this EQ down real quick one time. And uh, I haven't really touched it since that lesson. We'll just listen and see what it sounds like. And then we'll talk about compression. But here's a little taste of Goose First Verse. What you mean my little homie got hit tonight? Why I feel like it's hell on earth and we live in the dodge. The streets got us in a trap and we hitting the ties. I'm just trying to ride in the forms, he ain't get to ride. Right before you passed on, I told him to rap on. Man, I love how you and Rich be killing the rap songs. Two chicks with him. I told him you damn wrong. Then we paused for a second, proceeded to laugh on. So one to the chest. Maybe I'll just pause it there because we're going to be dealing with this for a few. But uh, you kind of get an idea of where it's at. The only thing I really have on this main vocal is our EQ from the last time we uh, were touching this record from a previous tutorial. So today I want to talk about compression as I mentioned. I'm going to open up a stock compressor here. You can use any compressor of your choosing, but we're going to use the stock Pro Tools one today. Blah -dow. All right. So first, before I even explore this and what you know all these parameters do, let's just talk about compression for a quick sec. Compression, what it's meant to do is it's meant to limit dynamic range. You might be wondering what that means. If I were to zoom in on this vocal, for example, there's differences in volume between all these different hits, right? This is Goo's main vocal, but for example, if I blow this up a little bit, you can see that this word or phrase is significantly louder than these, you know, phrases or words that happened before it. And there's just very, you know, differences in volume between each of these things, because obviously when we're talking, we're not perfectly delivering it, everything at the same level, we're just performing it and focusing on how we're going to perform, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So these differences in volume pertain to dynamic range. There's a, there's a difference between how loud this is and how quiet this is. Now a compressor is going to reduce that dynamic range. So it's going to basically make this, for example, in, in a situation, it would make this louder part quieter, right? But then make this quiet part appear louder. So it would make them a little more equal in volume, depending on how you set up your compressor. Um, now, compressors are usually used without people understanding what they're supposed to be doing. They just do it because engineers say they use a compressor, but you really want to understand what you're trying to do. Now, in the case of a vocal, when I'm using a compressor, I'm basically trying to catch the peaks, trying to make sure that uh, these peaks are not overwhelming or too loud, and we're trying to also just glue the whole track together, right? So, as we're working on compression, we're ultimately going to be making this track sound potentially smoother, more equal in volume, as I said, and ultimately we're going to, you know, have the opportunity to potentially turn the volume up in the record as well, or on the specific track, by using the makeup gain function, which I'll talk about in a second. So, let's open up this compressor. We'll run through these parameters. I know I've talked about this in another tutorial, but I'm assuming this might be your first one, so we'll talk about it again. You have a few of these common parameters that you'll see on every compressor. Now, some compressors are a little different. They'll have less features, but more often than not, these are the main parameters that you'll see on most compressors, all right? Threshold, attack, release, ratio, and gain, right? There's also a knee function. We'll talk about that as well, but these, I would say five, are the main ones that you'll see on most compressors. Some compressors only have two functions, like a gain and a peak reduction, such as an LA-2A, a little bit different, but nonetheless, same sort of principles apply. We can explore that potentially in another lesson. Now, I'm just going to sort of reset some things here real quick, and then we'll talk about what each of these parameters do. So I'm going to bring my threshold up. Maybe I'll leave everything else, but I'm going to set my ratio to, let's say, a 2. So let's start with threshold. Threshold is the first thing that you'll probably want to address when it comes to setting up a compressor. Threshold is the point at which the compressor begins to work. So imagine there's this point and then the volume is happening, and then once the volume gets to a point where it exceeds the threshold, 
the threshold basically turns the compressor on. It engages the compressor so that it actually begins to work. And once that signal passes that threshold, the compressor actually works to turn down that volume. That's what basically is happening. This compressor or a compressor in general can be thought of as an automatic volume fader that sort of works and turns things down when they become too overwhelming. And then when stuff isn't too overwhelming, when it's too quiet, it just sort of leaves it untouched. Okay. So the threshold, we're going to dial this in last, but I just want to point out that this is the point at which the compressor is going to begin to work. All right. The next thing you have is attack and release. Attack is basically how fast the compressor reacts to the material. So if I were to set this compressor to the right, for example, it's fairly slow or it is slow. If I set it all the way to the left, it's fast, right? So that means it would react fast and turn down the material right away. Whereas if I have it slow, it may not even turn down the material at all, depending on how we have the threshold set. So all these parameters definitely sort of correlate to each other and you have to set them appropriately. Now, having a slow attack like this all the way to the right can be perceived as more transparent. Um, that's because it's going to let the transient through. The transient is like the first initial hit of a sound. So, for example, this word, not the best example, but there's, you know, somewhat of a transient here at the beginning. Here's a transient right here for sure, right? So it might let some of those through and not affect them. This will just, again, give it a more transparent feel depending on the, the record. Now, release is the opposite of attack. It's how fast the compressor lets go of the material and lets it go back to an uncompressed state. So if I was to have the same sort of thing, all the way to the left would be a fast release, all the way to the right would be a slow release. So if I have a slow release, it's gonna basically continue compressing even though maybe the track should not be compressed anymore. It should be now more dynamic, right? Whereas if I have a pretty fast release, it's gonna let go of it fairly quickly, letting it come back to an uncompressed state, and again, maybe be perceived as more transparent or less noticeable, the compression itself, that is. Now, ratio is gonna determine how much compression actually takes place. Right now, I have it set to two to one. This is a fairly light ratio. Um, what it basically means is for every two decibels of volume that goes into the compressor, one will come out once it surpasses the threshold, just as a little side note. So basically, it's going to cut the signal in half, volume-wise. All right, if I have a higher ratio, so if I'm entering like a 4 to 1 ratio, 5 to 1, etc., obviously, we're getting a much more extreme form of com compression, much more gain reduction taking place. So for example, with a 4 to 1 ratio, 4 decibels of volume go in above the threshold, 1 comes out. It's basically cutting the volume into a quarter. So we're going to sort of set this logically using our brains a little bit, maybe not even necessarily hearing things. And then what I'm going to do is maybe tighten and dial in some more specific parameters afterwards. But we'll just sort of talk about how I like to set up compressors in general. And again, we can massage these parameters a little bit after. Now, first things first, I'm going to set the threshold very last, but I'm going to focus on attack, release, and ratio. Ratio in this case, I'm going to leave at a two to one, fairly transparent. We're not really going to hear, well, we're going to hear it, but it's not going to be too drastic, right? It's not, it shouldn't be super, super noticeable. It should be basically very light and again, transparent. I don't want this to feel like it's squashed and really heavily compressed. I just want it to sort of catch the peaks and even them out as much as possible in relation to the quieter moments of the track. Attack, I'm gonna make my attack maybe about a medium attack, all right? I might change this a little bit later, but I know if I have a very slow attack like this, the compressor may not even work at all to turn things down. So I'll probably need to have it in the medium kind of area to start. My release, I'm gonna have it be a little bit fast well, it's going to be fast, but it's going to be a little slower than the fastest it could be. This is because if I have a very, very fast release, sometimes distortion and other artifacts start happening with digital audio. So I want to have it hang on for just a little bit, but still let go of the material as fast as possible. Now, the last thing we're going to do is dial in the threshold. And I'm going to do this with, uh, while listening to the actual track. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to basically bring my threshold down while listening to the track. And I'm going to watch this GR meter. This is the gain reduction meter. It's showing me how much volume I'm losing over time. Now, as I'm doing this, we're going to probably look for between one and three decibels of volume reduction. So not a whole lot. One is maybe the point where people may start to notice. Two and three, a little more noticeable. But nonetheless, this is a very light form of compression. We're not going to be, it shouldn't be super, super drastic. It should just be, again, gluing things together a bit. But again, I have to set this to my source material. I can't just set it and make sure it works. I got to sort of do it while listening in context. Now, the thing I didn't talk about right now is the gain. The gain I'm going to set very, very last after the threshold, and I'm going to set it based on how much volume I'm losing with the gain reduction. 
So for example, let's say we see I'm losing about three decibels of volume uh, on average, I might add three decibels of gain back to compensate for that loss, all right? We'll explore that after. Let's just focus on setting the threshold appropriately. So here we go, I'm gonna play this and dial the threshold in. So I have it reset all the way to the top. What you mean my little homie got hit tonight? Why I feel like it's hell on earth and we live in the dodge The streets got us in a trap and we hitting the ties I'm just trying to ride in the forms, he ain't get to ride Right before you passed on, I told him to rap on Man, I love how you and Rich be killing the rap songs Two chicks with him, I told him you damn wrong Then we paused for a second, proceeded to laugh on So one to the chest, man, nothing could last long Left two kids behind, I know it's a sad song All in the past gone, life can be so cheap I can feel it in my soul, the pain can so deep so that's pretty cool. You can hear, and if you pay attention, you can just notice that it's really grabbing like the last words of every bar, you know what I mean? Right before we passed on, rap on. And when you're hearing these lines, that's really when the compressor is sort of activating and turning it down. Makes sense, those are probably the loudest lines in the track. Gu really emphasized those lines when he was performing. So that's kind of what's being caught and turned down in the mix. Now you notice that we're not seeing a steady amount of gain reduction. It's kind of challenging to do that. Uh, it's just sort of varying depending on the word, right? Only those really loud phrases are getting turned down. The quiet ones are sort of being untouched, right? So when I'm watching this, I noticed it was floating between one and three. Consistently, it was hitting one to maybe two. So what I might do is I might go into the gain and I might turn it up by 1.5, let's say, and just evaluate how that sounds. Now, as I'm adding gain back, I want to make sure that we're obviously not clipping on our track. So this is important to keep in mind, right? If you're clipping, then maybe you don't want to add gain at all and just focus on adding your volume back on the fader level itself. All right, I'm going to bypass this compressor. We're going to listen. I'm going to put it in and we'll just see, you know, what's this compressor doing? How is this gain affecting it? And just listen to make sure this is the right choice. What you mean my little homie got hit tonight? Why I feel like it's hell on earth and we live in the dodge The streets got us in a trap and we hitting the ties I'm just trying to ride in the forms, he ain't get to ride Right before you passed on, I told him to rap on Man, I love how you and Rich be killing the rap songs Two chicks with him, I told him you damn wrong Then we paused for a second, proceeded to laugh on So one to the chest I'm curious what happens if I bump it up two So an extra .5 on the game Let's just hear this what you mean my little homie got hit tonight? Why I feel like it's hell on earth and we live in the dodge The streets got us in a trap and we hitting the ties I'm just trying to ride in the forms, he ain't get to ride Right before you passed on, I told him to rap on Man, I love how you and Rich be killing the rap songs Two chicks with him, I told him you damn wrong Then we paused for a second, proceeded to laugh on So one to the chest, man, nothing could last long you get the idea, you can hear it's coming up a little bit. There's still more work to be done. Not a huge, huge difference, but I felt that this adding 2 dB of gain was a good choice. There's still headroom, we're not clipping when I'm looking at my track. Um, and I kind of noticed a few things. I want to just solo this vocal for a second. And if you remember, if I open up this EQ, this is what we were doing before. We were cutting some low end and just sort of notching out a few resonant frequencies on Goo's vocal. And uh, you might notice that when I put this compressor in, the low end also just comes up a little bit. We're getting a little bit more presence because it's helping, again, glue everything together dynamically. But I think that's also affecting the frequencies as well, which is totally fine. I'm just pointing this out. So I have this on solo. I'll play it without the compressor and then I'll put it in and just pay attention really to the low end of the vocal and see how it's sitting to make sure, you know, is it coming up? And, you know, maybe we need to do something about it or maybe we like it and we want to leave it. But just let's pay attention and see. What you mean my little homie got hit tonight? Why I feel like it's hell on earth and we live in the dodge? The streets got us in a trap and we hitting the ties. I was trying to ride in the forms, he ain't get to ride. Right before he passed on, I told him to rap on. Man, I love how you and Rich be killing the rap songs. Two chicks with him. I told him you damn wrong. Then we paused for a second, proceeded to laugh on. Took one to the chest, man, nothing could last long. Left two kids behind, I know it's a sad song. All of the past gone. So... Not the biggest deal, but just a little more presence in the low end, which is cool. I like that. I'm glad that the compressor is doing that. It's just, again, helping kind of even everything out um, for this vocal. And it's doing what I like, you know? Now, the thing is that I, I might save this for a secondary lesson, but you can also use multiple compressors in series. So that means I'm not going to have just one compressor dialed in a certain way that's acting very aggressively, but instead I stack multiple compressors and do very gentle maneuvers across them. Um, in order to achieve a more transparent or less noticeable effect while simultaneously increasing the overall level of the track. 
that's something that we can maybe explore in another lesson, but just something to think about if you find yourself dialing a compressor in and using a very aggressive settings and losing a lot of volume while also adding a lot of volume back with the gain. That's cool, but you may not also want to be doing that because again, these are very aggressive moves um, and it could just sort of affect the integrity of your track depending on the situation. Now, the only thing I didn't talk about, and I'll just maybe give a quick highlight, is the knee. Uh, I left this knee basically set to hard. You can see it's kind of like two lines. When I increase it like this, it becomes a bit more sloped. You can see sort of the, the, the record here or the line here. Um, so when I have it more over here, it's hard. Over here, it's soft. It kind of just affects the character of the sound, really. You know, we can just kind of play with it right now just so you hear the difference. Shouldn't be too much of a difference, but nonetheless, let's see. What you mean my little homie got hit tonight? Why I feel like it's hell on earth and we live in the dodge The streets got us in a trap and we hitting the ties I'm just trying to ride in the forms, he ain't get to ride Right before you passed on, I told him to rap on Man, look how you and Rich be killing the rap songs Two chicks with him, I told him you damn wrong Then we paused for a second, proceeded to laugh on Took one to the chest, man, nothing could last long Left two kids behind, I know it's a sad So there you have it, we've kind of gone through compression We talked about the different settings uh, as I mentioned, I started with the ratio, particularly doing a two to one ratio, fairly light, not super aggressive. I wanted this to be fairly transparent so we're not squashing the vocal. After that, we manipulated the attack and release. We had a fairly fast attack. Uh, I actually made it faster than I initially had it. This was just to get the right reaction from the vocal itself. After that, I manipulated the release. The release obviously is letting go of the compressor, how fast that's occurring. So I had it also be fairly quick. We're not hanging onto the vocal and continuing to compress it. After that, I dialed in my threshold. This was in relation to the vocal track itself. I brought it down to a certain point to see about one to three dB of gain reduction on my gain reduction meter. Um, and once I saw that, I decided to add back a certain amount of gain based on what I was losing. In this case, it felt like two dB was about right because we we're losing somewhere between one and three, depending on the phrase. Now. The compressor was really reacting to the last words of every bar. That's when it's really, really working. And those parts are being turned down. But then the quiet parts, the parts that aren't passing the threshold and triggering the compressor are ultimately just being turned up because as I mentioned, we are adding 2 dB of gain. So they're coming up 2 dB in volume, whereas the, the, last, uh, the last words are being compressed and turned down, which is ultimately achieving a more cohesive and even volume result. So we can explore a few other ways to compress, but I think this is good for this lesson. Hope you guys got some value out of this. If you did, please share it with your friends, your producer, artist, vocalist friends, anybody you know that's mixing vocals and could benefit from this lesson because compression is something that gets talked about a lot, but a lot of people still don't understand how to use it, especially when it comes to mixing vocals. So I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share with them, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace out. Five.